10, a Yimba striker Ezekiel Basse has joined Spanish giant Barcelona on a six-month loan deal. According to the Catalan club, Basse will be sent to the B team and will be assessed based on his performance at the end of the season. If he is successful, he will be promoted to the first team and sign a permanent contract with the club. The 20-year-old was part of Nigeria's squad that featured the 2016 African Nations Championship in Rwanda. The Turkish club Istanbul BB have confirmed that they have completed the signing of former Arsenal and Tottenham striker Emmanuel Adebayo on an 18-month contract. The 32-year-old experienced attacker who impressed at the African Cup of Nations for Togo had been without the club since leaving Crystal Palace at the end of the 2015-2016 campaign. Adebayo has signed a contract until June 2018 with the Istanbul outfit. The striker started his professional career with Mets and also wore the jerseys of Monaco, Arsenal, Manchester City, Real Madrid and Tottenham before joining Palace. France forward Dimitri Payet admits that he missed France as he returned to Olympic Marseille from West Ham United after they agreed to a transfer fee of £25 million. Payet, who left Marseille in 2015 to join the English Premier League club, stood out for his country at the Euro 2016. The Frenchman's relationship broke down with his former club when he told the East Londoners he no longer wanted to play for them and sought to return to Marseille in the current transfer window. The 29-year-old had, had scored eight goals in 32 games for France, featured at the Euro 2016 finals, which they lost to Portugal. And in the English Premier League, Crystal Palace beat Bournemouth 2-0 at the Vitality Stadium, while Arsenal suffered a shock loss 2-1 to Watford at the Emirates. Elsewhere, Sam Vokes' 87th minute goal was all Burnley needed to beat Leicester City 1 0 at the Tough Moor, while Middlesbrough, uh, Middlesbrough that is, and West Brom played a 1 1 draw in a keenly contested encounter at the Riverside Stadium. Relegation threatened Sunderland played a goalless draw with Tottenham Hotspur, with Swansea City defeated Southampton 2 1 at the Liberty Stadium. Chelsea and Liverpool played a 1-1 draw at Anfield. Blood and urine samples from athletes who sat, uh, who of course set European records will be stored for a minimum of 10 years in the sport's latest attempt to stamp out drug cheats. The head of the European Athletics team who last week set up a task force to examine the credibility of the records set in European athletics says that high on his list of priorities now is cleaning up what he refers to as a mess in the future. Middle distance. We know that there are some records that were set in times when doping control standards were not what they are now and are likely to be broken and are unlikely to be broken for many years if ever. This is both an image problem and a disincentive for clean athletes. We have asked a team of experts to review all European records and make recommendations that we can then discuss with the IWF and agree a way forward. We will store the doping control samples of all European records for a minimum of 10 years from now on. And that's it on Sports News and the News at 10. It's now back to Amarachi. Leader of the AU's latest member today addressed the continental body for the first time since his country was readmitted. King Mohammed VI said the kingdom's readmission is not intended to divide it but to benefit Africa. Several countries, led by South Africa, Algeria, and Zimbabwe, had been concerned about the readmittance but lost the debate at the summit in Addis Ababa. The North African Kingdom quit the AU's predecessor, the Organization of African Unity, in 1984 amid a dispute over the body's recognition of Western Sahara, most of which has been controlled by Morocco since 1976. It appears there will be a long wait before U.S. President Donald Trump's cabinet nominees are confirmed. Democrats in the U.S. Finance Committee are boycotting votes.
The Democrats said they wanted to gather more information about financial activities of health nominee Tom Price and his Treasury counterpart Stephen Munchen. The vote on Attorney General nominee Jeff Sessions was also postponed. The unexpected walkout by Democrats during scheduled votes to advance two of Donald Trump's more controversial cabinet nominees may be the first shot to lead to total partisan warfare on Capitol Hill. Canadian authorities have found out that a French-Canadian university student was a sole suspect in the mosque shooting on Sunday evening during prayers. Court documents identified the gunman in the attack as 27-year-old Alexandre Bissonnet. He has been charged with six counts of murder and five counts of attempted murder with a restricted weapon. The slightly built Bissonnet made a brief appearance in court under tight security, wearing a white prison garment and looking downcast. Prosecutors said all of the evidence was not yet ready and Bissonnet is set to appear again on February 21st. No charges read in court and he did not enter a plea. And the main news again. An, an unidentified civilian JTF member today paid the Supreme Christ as he was killed while stopping a suicide bomber from blowing up a mosque in Dallary Village, Borno State. Also today, senior lawyers converged on Lagos for the second day and condemned what they described as rot in the judiciary. And the Kingdom of Morocco today rejoined the African Union after more than 30 years of non-membership of the continental body. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.